Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to try out one of the four Holbein Itutori gouache sets. These are 12 new colors each that reflect the four seasons of Japan. I've been wanting these sets for a while and I even got scammed trying to get a better deal. But since I did get my money back, um, I decided to get the real thing from a trusted supplier and so I got two because these can get a little bit expensive. The two sets that I got are the spring and the autumn sets. I figured I would choose one that would have colors that I use the most so it doesn't just sit on my storage and I would actually get to use them a lot. So for that I got the autumn set. I also got the spring set because I figured I would also need to get colors that I wouldn't normally use so to push myself out of my comfort zone. So that one is what we're gonna be trying out today. I just love all of the colors in this set. I think that even though the autumn set has a lot of the colors that I would normally use in my artworks, I think that the spring set this one is just the most exciting out of all the four seasons because even though i'm not in love with pastel watercolors i just love seeing pastel colors in gouache i also love the bright pops of color in there which really does remind me of spring even though here in the philippines we only have wet and dry seasons when i think of spring these are the colors that that come to mind but also there's a couple in here that are sort of surprising it also has one gray color and then one metallic gray color which i don't really know how metallic colors would fit that well with spring but i still really love seeing it because i haven't tried any metallic gouache before and i think i messed it up in the swatching process because i just laid it out too thin. I think that in the future, if I were to use that in an artwork, I would need to lay it down thicker than I did for the swatch. So now I'm going to use these colors to paint a little artwork. The only thing that I would add to the ones that come in the set is a zinc white, which sort of reminds me that the only set out of the four that comes with the white is the summer set. And I think that's because all of these colors are new and they didn't want any repeats between the four sets. So so the summer one is the one that got the white. So I am using my own white for this artwork. We're also just going to be painting over a little sketch that I did from the movie Emma. And I'm also going to be talking about that movie later on if we have any more time for more voiceover. But coincidentally, the movie is also divided into four seasons. It's sort of highlighted in some of the scenes from the movie, but yeah, this is a tiny sketch in my very small sketchbook. I sort of am already anticipating myself having trouble trying to get the small details on it because it is so small. But another thing that I also anticipated having trouble with was just trying to get my darker colors out of the pastel ones that come in the set. For the shadows on the face, I used bellflower and one of the yellows and it did get me a nice subdued purple that works well for the shadows on the face. For the other flesh tones I also used the pale coral and some of the ochre that's in the set. Really for a lot of the pastel colors in this scene the set already comes with its own corresponding colors so it was really nice. The only thing that I really had trouble with was just getting the very darkest parts of the shadows right. So other than the purple with the yellows, I also tried mixing in the vermilion with the dayflower blue. By the way, both of these colors are gorgeous. And sometimes I'll also end up adding green to the vermilion because it is a very orangey red. I am really just glad to have that in the set, which is just so punchy and really complements a lot of the other pastel colors in the set. I could write a love letter to most of these colors. I, they are just so beautiful and they sort of are inspiring me to paint flowers, which I don't normally paint, but I'm glad that I have this set to sort of 
inspire me to expand my horizons just a little bit. For the darker colors, I sort of had to mix and match just the opposite colors. So the greens and reds and the purples and the yellows, I had to mix in to get the darkest details like for her eyes and her eyebrows. But I I just really love this set. I can't say that it's great for painting flowers and a lot of spring landscapes, but I think that it's better as a companion piece, so if you already have a set of the basic colors, this one would complement that really well. Outside of the colors, it is Holbein gouache, which has always been my favorite gouache. So it wasn't really surprising that I love the gouache formulation because I've always loved Holbein gouache. It's, they're just so pigmented that even when you water them down, they feel like watercolors. That's just how much pigment that's in them. I don't think that they're that binder heavy. They are also one of the best gouache when it comes to how they reactivate. I think that they're just so finely ground that, that when you add water to them, once they're dry, they still reactivate really well. These are just really great gouache if you haven't tried them already. They are my most recommended gouache. Maybe not this particular set if you're just starting out, but the basic colors are great to start with, I think. This comparison could be completely unfounded because I've only ever tried one color from Winsor & Newton's designer gouache, but I really think that they feel very similarly in how they reactivate. I think the only thing that feels differently between both brands is the consistency of the paints while they're in the tubes. Holbein gouache feels a little thicker out of the tube. So the Winsor Newton ones are more workable, I think, out of the tubes, but Holbein is great for laying down, laying down thick, opaque paints straight out of the tube. Too. So in conclusion to this mini review, the gouache is amazing. It's the best gouache that I've used, and the particular colors in this set are also beautiful. I even like how my palette looks. It kind of looks like it's mini galaxies in there when I mix these beautiful pastel colors together. So it's just an overall great set. If you already have a basic gouache color set, I think this one is a great companion piece. And even if you're not that into pastel colors, I think one of the other colors in the set would work well for you too. But that is it for my thoughts on the spring set of the Holbein Irodori gouache set. So now I can finally talk about this little artwork and also the movie Emma. <laughs> I just love this movie so much. I think I've exhausted my family with how much I've talked about it, but it's such a beautiful movie. I don't really like a lot of period romances because, I don't know, I just find it really hard to relate to the setting maybe, but Emma is surprisingly very funny and in such a particular way I think that it sort of reminds me of um, it sort of just reminds me of the youth that I find sort of lacking in period dramas even when the characters are really young but I really loved Emma I have had most of my family members watch it and I've watched it with them every single time and the movie is also just very aesthetically beautiful I think if you're into paintings in any way you would love this movie because Every scene just feels like it could be a painting in some way. Not just in the colors, because there are a lot of pastel sort of scenes in this movie, but also with the soft lighting and the way they sort of have the composition in mind when maybe placing the characters. It's hard to explain without knowing the proper cinema sort of lingo to explain why I love this movie so much, but just it's beautiful. You should watch it if you haven't already. So aside from the times that I had trouble getting the shadows right, I really loved working on this tiny thing so much. I sort of had to remind myself of what kind of colors I'm working with because I think it's a force of habit where I just tend to use the very vibrant colors first 
and then try to mix my own pastel colors with the gouache. I've sort of had to remind, to remind myself to use them more, especially the, the silver gray. I don't think I've ever used gray at all. I'm trying to think if I've ever did use gray, not um, even with watercolors. I think that I've just been mixing my own or that I don't use it at all in my artworks, but it was really hard for me to work the gray in there. Even though there are a lot of lots of gray in the photo, I sort of just tended to use my my white more. But towards the end, I did sort of got more used to the color palettes that I was using, and so I was incorporating more of them in there. I did keep on telling myself that I couldn't wait to paint another painting with them because I really wanted to use some of those beautiful pastel blues in there too, which I couldn't use in this one. And that also goes for most of the colors in this set, so I can't wait to use them. For the smallest, smallest details in the piece, I did have to use my colored pencil with them because I just didn't have the brush that small and I'm also just not great at painting tiny details. I don't think my hand is that steady but yeah, the colored pencils I used for that is also Holbein, it's called the Holbein Artists Colored Pencils and I've been using them for a few of my gouache artworks I think. And it's completely unrelated to the video, but their Holbein colored pencil sets also have one of the most beautiful pastel selection in them. But yeah, that is it for this video. I cannot wait for the autumn one. I think I would feel a little more at home with those colors. So yeah, stay tuned for the video on that. Thank you guys for watching this one and for making it through a lot of my ramblings. But yeah, I will be seeing you guys again soon. <laughs>